Greetings, sports fans. It's time for some highlights. We're so proud of Judah's dedication to athletics, his family, and his faith. He's a passionate young man, and he gives 100% to everything he puts his hands to. These clips are in chronological order, so you can see his progression as we go through. Hope you enjoy. Watch Judah draw the defense with a little razzle-dazzle and then hit up his teammate for an assist. It's around me every single day. Uh, but a part of that is having the will to succeed. Um, you know, knowing that you put the work in and have the confidence to let it show. Um, what I tell people is just be the best version of yourself in anything that you do. You don't have to live anybody else's story. Um, sometimes people make it seem like you have to have certain prerequisites or, or a crazy life story in order to be successful in this world. Um, but the truth is you, you really don't. It doesn't matter where you come from. What you have or don't have, what you lack, what you have too much of, but all you need to have is, is faith in God, an undying passion for what you do or what you choose to do in this life. Judah chose to be Pistol Pete Maravich for his American Heritage Project at school. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we all know that life is ups and life is downs. I'm Pistol, Pistol Pete Maravich, and I can tell you from experience that through these ups and downs, God has a plan. I didn't always know the Lord. So it's one thing to talk about battle, but it's another thing to do battle. I knew this. My life was basketball, sun up to sun down. Literally, I slept on a ball for my pillow. You just commit, you dedicate your life to basketball and that's all you have to do. And you'll live happily the rest of your lives. And that's what I did, I became a human basketball. 
I was a basketball android. I believed in God when I was a young boy, but the God I believed in was a heavenly Santa Claus, someone who would take care of my needs. He would get me things, or when I was in trouble, he would get me out of it. I knew of no personal relationship, nor did I care, because my commitment was to basketball, one of the first idols and gods in my life. I was, and still am, the highest scoring college player, but yet that deep sadness haunted me. I signed the largest contract in the history of sports in 1970. I, had, I went to my dad. I said, Dad, I hope you're proud because my dad was always my hero. I said, I've got it. I've signed a million-dollar contract. I've made it to the pros. Now all i got left is the ring. And when I get the ring, I'll be able to sit by the pool, twinkle my toes in the water, and sit back with my drink and live happily ever after. That's what I thought. But it just didn't turn out that way. In 1980, I quit basketball. I was despondent. I didn't know what to do. It was out of bitterness, and I was immature. And I became a recluse in my house. And yes, I did get that million dollar contract, but I was more depressed than ever. I tried alcohol, but no peace. I tried fame and fortune, no peace. I tried Hinduism and yoga, no peace. My life was spinning out of control. And finally, at my lowest point, I surrendered everything and found my peace in Christ. I led my family to Christ. I finally played basketball for Christ. But in 1982, I went to bed one night. It was late night, and I was watching television. It was like any other night, and I just went to bed. And as I laid in the bed, things started coming up in my mind, and I could not sleep. And the things that were coming up in my mind, I knew what they were. It was called sin. I knew the difference between right and wrong, and I always had a heavy conscience whenever I did something morally wrong. It was sin that came, and it would not leave me alone. Everything I'd ever done, all my rebellion against God, all my rebellion against my parents, the people I loved, the people I hated. In 1987, I shared this testimony at the Billy Graham Crusade. I remember crying out in my spirit. I said, oh, God, you're going to have to save me. I can't take this life anymore. I've had it with what they say makes you happy. I've had it with what they say makes will make your life just so, so good. And I remember at that point, with tears in my eyes, the Lord spoke to me. He said, be strong and lift thine own heart.